So this is our third and final motivational example to illustrate the need for the calculus of variations. So remember the first one was Fermat's principle of optics. The second one in the previous video was determining the shape of a liquid drop on a flat smooth surface. And in this case we're going to look at actually an optimization problem. So the first two are physically motivated. The third one is motivated by an optimization problem. So the idea is as follows. We have a river that we want to cross. So I have a left bank and a right bank of the river and I want to go from a point on the left bank to a point on the right bank and get across the river in my boat in the minimum amount of time. This is known as Zermelo's problem. So again this is an optimization problem. It's not based on a physical principle. There's something I want to determine the best way of accomplishing a particular task. So to do so we'll devise a functional but we're going to call it an objective functional. It's a functional in the usual sense that we've been discussing but it defines an objective and the objective in this case will be to get across the river in the minimum amount of time. Now in some cases you might want to, for example, minimize the cost of developing a product or manufacturing a product or whatever the case might be. So in that case we would call it a cost functional. So as I like to say, if you're an optimist you call it an objective functional. If you're a pessimist you call it a cost functional. All you can ever think about is money, right? So it's a cost functional. So here's the setup. We have a river and the speed of the river is v is a function of x. Here's the left bank and the right bank of the river from x0 to x1 and we have the speed of the river v as a function of x. We're going to start at this point x0 u0 on the left bank and we have a point x1 u1 on the right bank. So we're going to start here and then follow a path across the river in our boat in order to get to that point on the other side. So the capital V here will be the constant speed of the boat relative to the moving water. So I just put the boat's motor on constant throttle. So it goes at the same speed relative to the moving water. And there'll be a heading angle theta of x that you see from the horizontal there and that determines the rudder, right? So the rudder and the speed determine my, my path across the river. So that's what we're looking for. Okay, so the first step is to determine a mathematical expression of the word statement of the problem. I want to minimize the time of travel across the river. So this is very similar to Fermat's principle in the sense that I want to minimize the total travel time capital T. We actually now have two dependent variables u and theta. It turns out they're related to each other but for now it looks like we have two separate dependent variables u and theta. The path and the heading angle both of which are functions of the independent variable x. So once again very similar to the optics example the travel time will be the integral of dt from the time at which I start on the left bank to the time at which I get to my destination on the right bank. So I add up those little dt's along the path and that gives me the total travel time. But time is distance divided by velocity so that's ds so that's a little differential arc length along my path u of x and the velocity of the boat is both due to the fact that I have my motor going as well as the fact that the river is flowing at a certain speed. Okay, so v sub b is the magnitude of the resultant velocity vector of the boat due to both of those contributions. So we can think of it in component form, dx dt, your x dot, would be capital V times cosine theta, again theta being the heading angle, and u dot would be vx, that's the local speed at that x location of the river, plus capital V times sine theta. And so those would give me the x and u component, so the cross stream and downstream components of the velocity of the boat. We could then write the velocity as a vector, be x dot i plus u dot j. And so vb then is the square root of the sum of the squares of those components. So I've just substituted those in here and simplified to get this expression. So this is an expression for the velocity of the boat, taking into account the velocity across the river as well as the velocity and heading angle of the boat itself relative to the river velocity. Okay, so we can substitute those in here. And just like in the, other, the previous two examples, ds is a little differential arc length along the path of the boat. So we can rewrite that as ds is the square root of 1 plus u prime squared all times dx for the same reasons as before. So that's relating the arc length ds to dx, which is just a horizontal differential length. Then that gets substituted in 
for ds. So we have the square root of 1 plus u prime squared times dx. And then the denominator, again, that's the velocity of the boat. So 1.4 is our functional. Once again, I took the word statement of the problem, the objective stated in words, minimize the time of travel of my boat across the river from one point to another. And then I express that in the most natural way that I could in mathematical form, and I end up with a functional. Now you can see it looks a little more, a little more complicated than our previous two cases, but nevertheless, this is a functional, capital T, that involves two functions, u here and theta here, that I need to determine in order to minimize the total travel time. Now it turns out, as I alluded to before, that u and theta are not completely independent, and this makes sense intuitively. If I know the heading angle and velocities of the river and so forth, then I can extract out the path as well. So it turns out they are related, and I won't get into the details, but you can write down a relationship between the path u as well as the heading angle theta. So really you only have one unknown dependent variable as these two things are related. You could either take this expression and substitute it in to eliminate the theta, for example, the heading angle, or you could actually impose this as a constraint. So you could have your functional with u and theta, so two dependent variables. With this, this is known as a differential constraint that relates those two quantities, u and theta, together recognizing the fact that they're not completely independent of one another. So either, either way could be done, and we'll talk about how to do that later in chapter two. So in all three of these cases, we took the word statement of a, of a physical principle or an optimization problem, and we put it into the most natural mathematical form that we could, and in all three cases, it ended up being a functional, a definite integral involving an unknown function u of x or u of r in this case. And so in every case we have a function and we have a functional. The function is the thing that we're looking for. That's the path of the light, the shape of the liquid drop, that's the heading angle or the path of the, the boat. And we have a functional. The functional is the thing that we're trying to minimize or maximize or otherwise be a stationary function. And that is the total travel time for the light, the total energy of the drop, or the total travel time of the boat. So in every case, there's going to be a dependent variable u of x or r. That's what we're looking for, and we're looking for that function that minimizes or maximizes or otherwise makes our functional stationary, as we'll discuss in chapter two. So just like in these three motivational examples, in every case, we're gonna have a function that we're looking for, and we're looking for the function that minimizes or otherwise extremizes a functional, which is a definite integral involving that unknown function. So here I've included a table that just hints at some of the variational principles that govern some of the physics and optimization control problems that we'll be looking at throughout the rest of the book. So in optics, we have Fermat's principle, which is a minimum time principle. For static equilibrium, that's minimization of potential energy. So if you have an, an object, a building, a beam, a column, a person, and you want to determine the static state of that object, it's such that it minimizes the total potential energy of the object. Just like the liquid drop, if it didn't have surface energy, it would just try to minimize its potential energy. Now in dynamical systems, which we'll spend a lot of time on in part two of the book, that's governed by Hamilton's principle, which is essentially a variational form of Newton's second law, so F equals MA. So we'll see how we can generalize Newton's second law into a variational principle that actually has widespread application well beyond the traditional dynamics and mechanics setting of Newton's second law. And then through the river crossing trajectory problem, we also have optimization and control, where there's some sort of objective or cost functional that we're trying to minimize. So in these cases, the physical principle determines the functional, whereas in optimization and control, we design the cost functional or objective functional in a way that accomplishes our purposes and our goals.